Hello and welcome to the Orwell Astronomical Society podcast for November 2011. This month is a great month for observing the planets. All eight of them are reasonably well placed to view, although the more distant planets Uranus and Neptune will need binoculars to see. Jupiter is the best and most prominent object to view this month. It is even better if you look at it through binoculars or a small telescope. The point to note here is that if you do use binoculars, make sure that you use a camera tripod or even a wall or fence to rest the binoculars on. This will stop the inevitable handshaking and make for some wonderful views. You should see the four largest moons of Jupiter, or sometimes one, two or three, as some of them can be hiding behind or in front of the planet itself. If you have a reasonably powerful pair of binoculars or a telescope, then you might even be able to make out some stripes on the planet's surface. So where to find Jupiter? It is currently in the constellation of Aries, which is a very nondescript group of stars and difficult to find. However, Jupiter is very bright and really stands out. If you look east to southeast in the evening, or west or southwest in the early morning, the very bright object is bound to be Jupiter. Let's move on to the pair of planets that are closer to the Sun than the Earth, Venus and Mercury. These are both visible just after sunset this month. Venus first. This is very obvious in the southwest immediately after sunset. It is a very bright object, but take care not to look at the sun either directly or with any binoculars or telescopes. At the end of the month, Venus is particularly spectacular with a thin crescent moon just above it in the southwest. Mercury is a little more difficult to find but it is beneath Venus in the sky for the first half of November. It really gets too close to the Sun thereafter. If you have found Venus, you will notice that it is very low on the horizon, while Mercury is even lower, about halfway between Venus and the horizon. You will need a very clear sky to see these planets, as they are so low down, and you definitely need to wait for the Sun to set completely before trying to locate Mercury. OK, on to Mars the red planet. Unfortunately you will need to get up early to look at Mars, the best time being around 4.30 in the morning. It is currently in the constellation of Leo the Lion. It passes the brightest star in Leo, Regulus, throughout November. At the start of the month it is above the star, moving to the left of it towards the end of the month. I'll tell you how to find Leo later in this podcast. Finally Saturn, the ringed planet, You'll be able to see a hint of the rings with basic binoculars, but with a stronger pair you'll be able to make out the rings quite well. It is best seen at the end of the month around 6am. It is quite low down in the east-southeast at this time, and you'll see two bright objects, the star Spica on the right and Saturn on the left. The moon is also fun to observe with binoculars or small telescope. Don't, however, fall into the trap of looking at it at full moon or near full moon. It is not dangerous to look at the moon in this way, but it is very bright and may cause some discomfort for a short while. It is much better to look at the moon when it is a crescent up to about the half moon phase. This way the light from the sun is arriving from the side, and so craters and mountains have greater shadow relief, and hence show up better. The best time to view the moon this month is in the second half of the month, especially around the new moon on the 25th. Right, now we'll look at the sky and try to find some interesting things to look at. Take this podcast out with you and find a nice viewing location with a good view of the sky, with little or no light pollution, especially from sodium lights. I'm assuming now that it's 8pm at the start of the month. Look north. Can you see the plough, or the Big Dipper, or the saucepan? This is the well-known group of seven stars in the shape of a ladle or saucepan, and at this time of the year its base is downwards, or the right way up. Find the two stars on the right-hand end, and the two stars away from the handle of the saucepan. Now trace a line upwards from these two stars, and the next bright star you'll find is Polaris, the pole star. Now look at the three stars forming the handle. Look closely at the middle of these three stars. How many stars can you see? You should be able to see two stars very close together. And these two stars used to be used as an eyesight test for the military. Now look towards the east, your right. And you will see a very bright object, Jupiter. 
Now imagine a line between the plough and Jupiter. Look about two thirds of the way along from the plough and then drop down a little bit. You should see a fuzzy group of stars called the Pleiades. This looks really good in binoculars. It is a group of really young, really hot stars, only a few million years old. You can still see some of the gas or nebulosity that they formed out of left swirling around them. Now look straight up. You will see a W or an M, whichever way you look at it, made out of five stars. This is Cassiopeia. Now follow to the point directly over your head and then the same distance again from Cassiopeia but the other side. You are now looking at Cygnus the Swan. You should see a six star cross. If you then follow down towards the ground, about a third of the way, you'll come across a bright star called Vega in the constellation of Lyra, which is a Grecian musical instrument. Now look carefully in a long arc between Cygnus and Cassiopeia. Can you see what looks like a long thin cloud? This is the Milky Way, and you are now looking directly towards the centre of the galaxy. Finally, on to Leo. For this you need to get up early in the morning. First find Orion in the southwest, now look due south, and then look up about two thirds of the way from the horizon to directly overhead. You should see a backwards question mark. This is the lion's head. Now find the bottom bright star of this question mark. This is the star Regulus. Mars is the red object that will move around Regulus this month. I hope that this podcast has given you some ideas of what to look at over this month. There is plenty more to, up there to see, and I recommend that you look on the internet, astronomy magazines, or in an astronomy book for a sky map to show you what else is out there and where to look for it. Listen out next month for December's highlights. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.